guys, welcome back to my channel. So I had this idea in my head and I realized it's still just under a month away from St. Patrick's Day, but I couldn't get the idea out of my head and I had to do it. So we're going to go with it. So what I'm doing is this is just, it's a Jack Daniels bottle and I went ahead and I took off all of the labeling and everything and we're going to recycle it today and make something new with it. Now I got these shamrocks and some other St. Patrick's Day type images and all I'm going to do right now is I'm taking them and kind of figuring how I want them on the bottle and then I'm going to trace them on using my carbon paper. Now it doesn't the lines on it aren't like super crazy dark like they would be if you transferred it onto regular paper or even resin. They're a little bit lighter but you can still see them so it's not a huge problem. So that is all I'm going to do right now that's our first step now i did clean this bottle off really really well with some alcohol just to make sure that all the bits and pieces of the glue came off and to give it a really good clean so that i don't have any issues with any of the resin sticking or anything else like that as i work on my project and we're gonna go with it now my vision for this is to make it kind of stained glass ish uh, in appearance and just to kind of like I don't know do something fun and reuse something that would otherwise go in the trash right so I thought that this was a really really cute idea and it doesn't obviously it doesn't have to be done just for St. Patrick's Day you could do anything with any kind of I would say flat reusable jar for this particular method that I'm going to do today now I've got all my images on there so all I'm going to do now is I am going to go over those images with the PBO outliner paint and I'm just using black for this now what that's going to do is it's going to give me a barrier so that I don't have to worry about my resin flowing over as I put it on. I am going to be using Estoyo UV resin today for this. Uh, you could you could do it with epoxy, but it's going to take a lot, lot longer to do than it would if you were going to, just to use UV resin on it. And, I mean, you could do it, but figure, you know, for each, pe each side of the bottle to cure you're looking at, you know, a week's worth of project for one bottle as opposed to now I did do this over the course of a couple of days, but it would have been a lot faster just using the UV resin. Like I could probably get it done in say a day and a half ish, a whole day if I had the whole day to, to wait on it, but different elements of the drying, like I can only do pretty much you know, two sides of this bottle at a time with the outliner pen now it or paint. Now it does dry fairly fast to where you can flip it onto the next side, but you're still looking at, you know, at least a good 30 minutes so that you don't ruin it in between, you know, flipping it on its side that it's painted already. And we're just going to kind of go over this. I, I realize the image right now because it's a clear bottle and you're seeing the underside. It kind of looks like, oh my God, what is this? But it'll all come together as, you know, I do the sides and you can't see through it anymore. Like, I, I think it turns out really, really cute. And the sky's the limit as to what you can actually, actually put on this. I think it's a neat little project. So for this side, I just kind of freehanded the rainbow that I'm doing and I realize it's not the best and my lines aren't like super straight. I'm still kind of learning how to use this outliner paint and I don't have the steadiest of hands when it comes to this kind of stuff, but it's fine. Now for the rainbow, I went ahead and did a border around it and you'll see why later on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just taking a little bit of my Soyo UV resin and I'm putting in some glitter. This side is going to be the little gold coins 
And I've got little uh, shamrocks on the inside, so I'm just kind of doing the outside edges of this. And this is where that outliner paint comes in handy because you can do different elements inside. And I didn't go over it like I did on one of my previous projects where I had used it, where I had made super, super thick lines. I didn't do that because obviously UV resin, I don't want it to be like crazy thick because of I need it to cure right and I am adding all the glitter into it so I didn't want to have any issues and I do want you to be able to see the light through it because we are going to put some lights inside of this to make it you know light up so I do want to be able to to you know be semi transparent in effect but still like not be I, I don't know like I want you to be able to see through it and see each image, but not be super, super opaque, if that makes sense. And now just going in with the green. And now I did cure the gold first, just so that I don't have any issues with the colors medging together. I mean, they shouldn't because of the paint that I put on there. But, you know, I didn't want to, like, accidentally drip any of the green into the gold and then have to work on getting it out and all that stuff. This way I could just very easily wipe it off. And I put it in my UV light goes up to like 150 seconds so I just put it in for the 150 seconds let it cure and this stuff cures fantastic like I really really love this UV resin a lot it cures super hard no stickiness no issues whatsoever hit my light the, for the third setting which is the 150 seconds and then I can move on to the next thing now this one is just this side is just the shamrocks and I'm just going to do the same thing. So as I go on each side of the bottle, I'm just going to kind of have some music going because it's, it's pretty much the same thing, just different images each time. And I will be back before we hit the next step.
I'm back. So we're done with the UV resin now. The last little bit is curing. Well, we're done for this part anyway. So now what I want to do is I want each one. I don't want all of this clear glass. Like I want it to not be quite so clear. So I'm just taking a little bit of my Nick Pro white mica and some of my gloss varnish and I am just kind of going along the border of this one with that mixture and making a white background so that these images really pop. And then we're going to let it kind of set and dry and then move on to the next one. Now, because I did it like this on this one, I decided that this is the only one at this point that I put a border on. And the border is helping because, like, it's a flat bottle, but it's got kind of rounded-ish edges. And if I didn't have a border on it, all of this is going to just fall off. Now, I made a mistake here of going over this stuff with my heat gun, hoping to make it dry faster. And all it did, and I'm going to show you this here in a second, look, it just kind of crinkled it up. So don't use a heat gun on this gloss varnish to make it dry faster. Just let it dry on its own and you won't have this issue. So because I did the border on the one side and I want the white background on all of the sides, I went ahead and I am going to do the border on each one of these sides that I haven't done yet so that I can add this white background and I don't have to worry about it running down the sides or any of that because I, you do need to kind of put it on a little bit on the thicker side because the way that this stuff sets when it dries is it kind of, it's the opposite of how resin cures, right? Resin cures and it pulls into the middle. This stuff pulls to the outside. So if you don't have it like nice and thick, laid on there what's going to happen is it's going to pull towards the sides and then you're going to have like those middle spots where it'll still be covered but it's not going to be as dark as it was when you let it go if that makes sense and you'll see here in a minute because there's one side that I didn't put enough on I didn't put enough mica powder in there either and that was part of the issue now I am going over this paint with my heat gun just a little bit to try and help the drying process a little bit faster so that I can get done with this now some of you may be wondering okay I could have gone in maybe with some white acrylic paint or you know several different things the reason that I wanted to do the mica powder is that it has that pearlescent look to it. So it's not going to be just a flat kind of just flat. You know what I mean? It's going to have that nice pearlescent look to it and go on with the, we've got the shininess from just the resin alone and then the shininess from the glitter. And I didn't want the background just to be plain and flat. And then if I did, the just like paint on it then I'd have to worry about brush strokes and all that other stuff I don't necessarily have to worry about that here now what I do have to worry about is you know like I said before putting it on thick enough that it's not going to dry stupid or you know hitting it with my heat gun like a really smart person and having all the crinkles if I had just let it alone it would have been fine and I wouldn't have had an issue with that kind of stuff but I didn't, so it is what it is. I mean, I could go over there and do a second coating of it, but I'm not that stressed about it, honestly. And that's it. Now, I did decide to go in and add the rainbow to this pot of gold as well. My husband said it was kind of a little lackluster and that I should have had that in there. So I went ahead and took his advice and added that in. So I'm just going to add this in here real quick too. And I will be back when we are on the next step.
so I'm finishing up the rainbow now, letting it cure. Then I decided that the neck of the bottle needed something too. So what I'm going to do is on each of these little sides, and they're kind of flattened on each side, is I'm going to alternate it between gold and the green just to just to give it a little bit more and make it less just bodily. You know what I mean? Like it's just, there's too much clear glass still. I don't like, we are going to put fairy lights in here and where I don't mind it showing a little bit, I don't want you to see nothing but fairy lights. Like that's kind of bleh. And it definitely needs something at the top. So I thought that this was a good addition and it will just kind of, add that little bit more wow factor and interest to this piece. So what I had to do is I wanted to alternate the colors. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the green first. Now I did have to cure it in between each one because otherwise it would just fall off once I turned the bottle to do the next side. So this process did take a little bit of time to do. And again, there are different ways that you could do this and different methods to use if you didn't necessarily want to use UV resin or maybe you don't want to use glitter you could use alcohol inks or just resin dyes you know something like that I wouldn't necessarily recommend micas unless you did it just the teeniest tiniest little bit so that it can cure I mean it, it's possible but you'd have to be very careful about doing it and what colors you used and all of that stuff because you do want the UV resin to cure as you're doing this. I just wanted it sparkly. I mean, if you think of St. Patrick's Day, it's all, you know, it's gold and it's just, I don't know, it feels like a sparkly holiday, I guess, <laughs> in my head. So I thought that that was kind of the best route to go for this and... Yeah, I, I, I like it. I like it a lot, actually. I think it adds a lot to the finished product and just gives it that little bit more, you know, pizzazz, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to finish this up and then I will be back.
Okay. So, I don't know if you noticed. So, the, uh, the, the sides of the bottle were a little bit more difficult to do. And I had to have them propped up so that I could work with both hands. But I was able to get done in the end. And now we're just going to go and finish up these last two sides with the outlining paint and the mica powder. And let that dry. Now, this stuff does take a while to dry. And this is why I was saying... Like, the different elements of this project made it take a little bit longer than it would necessarily if I didn't do it this way. Like, I could have been done with the UV part in a day. But the outlining pen and or paint, I don't, I keep wanting to call it pen. The outlining paint and the mica powder part with the gloss varnish... All of that took some time to, to dry in between the different sides. So this is where I had to take it over a few days to do. And why I'm saying that if you wanted to go the route with like epoxy resin as opposed to the UV resin, it may take longer. Now, could you potentially do what I'm doing right now with UV or I mean with epoxy? Sure. You could do your outlining pen and then just do all of it and let one side dry and be done in four days. You know, I mean, there's there's several different methods that you could go about doing this and take as long or as little time as you want. I mean, you could not do the background at all if you didn't want to. I just thought that it needed it so that you couldn't see through to the other side and you couldn't see all the fairy lights inside. And it just adds that little bit more, makes those pictures just stand out more. And, you know, I, I like it personally better with the background. Maybe you don't, you're, you don't have to put it on there. So it does take a few hours for it to dry because of how thickly I am putting it on there. It's not just a quick thin layer where it will dry in 20 or 30 minutes. It, it did take quite a while. And not being able to use a heat gun to speed it up because I didn't want those crinkles in it anymore you know there there was no way that I found any way to speed up the drying process without ruining the effect of it and getting that flat dry look that I want okay so this is the last side now I still think it needs something else even after all of this it still needs something else so my thought process is at first I had bounced back and forth on the like the bottom part of the bottle and the top part right above where I'm working now like all the way around not the slanted part but that flat part I thought about going in and putting a border of maybe gold or maybe green or maybe you know gold on the top green on the bottom whatever and I decided that I didn't want to do it that way because it was just I don't know. I think it would take away from it and just be too much of that. So I have this really pretty green ribbon and I thought, okay, I can glue that on and it'll tie the green into it more. I already knew I wanted to put a bow around the bottleneck, but if I put it on the top and the bottom where I was talking about, then that would add to it too and just add a different kind of texture to it. So I just took some school glue the clear school glue and I'm putting it down and kind of just working it into the fabric of the ribbon and pushing it down and then letting it dry now I'm making sure that I get all the corners and everything covered really really well with glue because I want it to stick could I've used hot glue yes I didn't feel like burning my fingers off this day so I didn't want to do that plus me hot glue and ribbons I feel like I always get where you can actually see that there's glue on there that like those patches and I didn't want that and I thought that if I used a school glue it would kind of eliminate that and then I am just taking my heat gun and going over it just for a few seconds on each side just to kind of help it stick while I do the top part and it worked perfectly well like I didn't have any issues with it whatsoever and you, like I said, you could use probably a, a variation of different things to put it on with. This is what I chose to do because I thought that it would be better for my fingers and just better in the long run and faster too. So that's what I chose to do. And I'm really happy I did. 
I really like the outcome of this a lot. Now, when I do the bow, my bow needs some work, and we know this, we know I suck at it, but, I mean, it kind of, even though I'm sure that I maybe, maybe would have been able to get a better looking bow, I, I kind of like the look of it. I really do. I think it's kind of cute in a way. I wish I did tie it on a little bit tighter around the neck of the bottle so that it couldn't be moved. But then at the same time, I kind of like the fact that you can move it too because this way you can make any side that you want kind of like the front of the bottle and you can move the bow around to kind of, you know, put it on the front side of whatever side you pick. And you can change it periodically if that's what you wanted to do. So it worked out in the end. I mean, it looks a little kind of, yeah, I don't know, in some parts of it, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And there's lots of other stuff that you can do to dress it up. I had thought about one time about maybe adding a couple flowers or some greenery, or maybe, I don't know if they sell them. I'm sure they do. Like you could get some shamrocks or something like that, or even what you could do, which would look really cool. And I didn't think about it until right now is you could get, they, I know they sell like kind of like tinsel, like Christmas tree tinsel with like shamrocks and stuff and it's green and you could cut it up and put the tinsel inside of the bottle with the lights. Like maybe put your lights in first and then put some tinsel in to fill the bottle up and have that in the background too. Could look kind of cute. Um, all I did was I poked a hole with my little hand drill in the top of the bottle cap so that I could feed the lights through and that's it. Now, the light box is an issue and I really couldn't figure out how to work it out so that it couldn't be seen. Like my brain just wasn't working with me, but I'm sure there's a way you could do it if you put a little bit more thought into it. Anyway, that's a wrap on this one, guys. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I will see you guys in the next one. Love ya. Bye.